Even though the month of August hasn't brought any major heat here at home, globally this summer has brought record temperatures and also some extreme heat across all seven continents. We're going to be breaking down the summertime heat and some of the extreme records that have been set and also talk about here at home as to where is the summer heat and will we see any for the remainder of the month of August. Meteorologist John Birchfield here. If you're not already subscribed to that Climate Friday newsletter, WTOL.com slash email. That is your source to get all the climate change information and the impacts to you each and every Friday straight to your inbox. So we're going to start down by talking about some of the warmth that has been experienced, not just during the summer, but really on a month by month basis across the globe. We are going on our 15th consecutive month. That has been the record warmest month on record. We're at 14 right now, and that is month by month setting global records across the globe. July was the most recent and August is poised to once again bring record temperatures. During the month of July, even though we didn't experience too much in the way of summer heat here at home and it was cooler than average for Toledo, that's not always a representation of what's going on across the globe as the month of July was the hottest on record going back to the 1800s. NOAA records date back 175 years, and July was the hottest July that has been experienced in all of those records. It was above average by a substantial margin with global temperatures 2.18 degrees above average. Now, not only did it bring a cumulative warm throughout the course of the month, but some extreme individual temperatures. If you look just at this one day, July 22nd, that was extremely noteworthy because according to Copernicus, Copernicus satellite data, it was the hottest day globally on record. The average temperature across the world in both hemispheres and over the oceans was 63 degrees, and that satellite data helps shed some light on what temperatures are, where they're aren't always weather observation sites such as at Toledo Express Airport. So using that data, it's determined by NOAA that July 22nd was the hottest day globally on record. Now, if you look at this calendar year so far, this is not just one isolated instance during the month of July. It has been a very warm year overall. Looking at the first seven months of the calendar year from January through the month of July, 2.3 degrees above record, so, uh, substantially above average global 2024 temperatures are quite warmer than they should be at this time of year. And that is versus the 20th century average comprising all of that data from 1900 to 2000 and looking at where we stand versus that average. So how will this year fare when all is said and done? Well, we still have a good chunk of the rest of the year to go, including the remainder of August and the entire autumn and start to the winter season. But it is nearly 100% certain that 2024 is going to end up in the top five hottest years on record. And based on where we stand so far, there's a high probability and computer modeling data uh, pinpoints around a 77% chance that 2024 is going to end up as the hottest year on record. This sounds like something you may have heard the last couple of years, and that is because these records keep rewriting themselves. So nearly 100% chance of ending up in the top five, and we're at a 77% chance of being the single most hottest year on record. Globally versus that 20th century average, this year has been significantly warmer than average, and there is a high probability that we do end up once again taking the top spot as the hottest year on record. So where do we stand here at home? Well, we have not had any major heat during the month of August so far, and we still stand at less than two weeks worth of 90 degree days. Of course, we talk about that record setting 1988 with 44 days at or above the 90 degree threshold, and typically we average 19 days. This time of year, you would expect us to be adding to that tally a bit more frequently, but not so much this year with most of August being in the 70s or the 80s. So we're still below average in terms of 90 degree days. And it's a good reminder that climate looks at the more aggregate data across the globe. And what's happening in Toledo is not always representative of what's happening across the world. So some of these extreme temperatures that have occurred globally, they sure haven't happened here, but some parts of the country and world have seen them. In fact, 10 countries have exceeded 50 degrees Celsius, which of course most countries do use that Celsius metric and 50 is a nice even number, but that equates to approximately 122 Fahrenheit. 
and over 10 countries have reached that threshold so far this summer and this year. Here's some extreme temperatures starting off in the United States. Death Valley, California, 129 degrees. Extreme warmth was reported there. Also in North America, Mexico um, saw 126 degree temperatures. Here's a look at some extreme temperatures from the Middle East area. We saw 123 degrees in Algeria, 123 in Morocco as well. And as we look towards Southeast Asia, India set record temperatures, China, as well as some other reports in Kuwait of 128 degrees Fahrenheit. Certainly extreme warmth and extreme heat across the globe. In addition to that, when you look at the data as a whole, 2024 global climate events, the oceans have been significantly warmer than average. We talk a lot about Lake Erie and how those temperatures are really skyrocketing close to 80 degrees. Well, the ocean so far had the second warmest July globally that has ever been recorded. And that, that satellite data does really come in handy because there's not buoys taking thermometer readings at all spots on the ocean. Of course, we tracked barrel, hurricane barrel, um, and the impacts to us here locally, the earliest cat five on record. And in the temperature department in North America, July was the second warmest on record. So globally, it was the hottest. North America was number two on record. South America, the warmest January through July period on record. So if you look at South America, the first seven months of the calendar year are poised to be the hottest on record. What about Europe? It was the warmest July on record. And when you comprise and compile all of this data together, that is where you get July being the hottest on record. So we are seeing these kinds of records across the globe, even though Toledo hasn't necessarily experienced the brunt of the heat. When you look at the cumulative data across the world, we are seeing some significant warmth. Now the month of August can sometimes bring the dog days of summer. We talked last week in the Climate Friday newsletter about some exceptionally warm August and really how we've been devoid of major summertime heat this month. The hottest August occurred in 1995 and the average high temperature during that month was over 88 degrees Fahrenheit. A good reminder that August can bring some extreme heat. In recent memory, 2021 was 87.3 and going down that list, a number of August have exceeded 85 degrees degrees and that is looking at the average high temperature just that daytime high and doesn't account for the overnight lows but certainly a reminder that August can bring the heat. Now the coolest August are quite a stark difference when you look at the average highs. This is the same data set except look how much cooler those temperatures are. 1915 only 74 degrees was the average high temperature and we have several August that all were under 77 degrees. Most of these though not too recent and that does correlate with the climate trend in that most of those cooler August occurred back in the late 1800s or the early 1900s and many of the hotter August on the other side of the spectrum are happening in more recent years. Now we're certainly not in this type of territory yet, but there have been a good number of days this August that have been shy of the 80 degree mark and have brought temperatures that are below average. So we're not going to make that list, but we're certainly not going to make the hottest list of August as well. And even though the summer heat has been absent here across the globe, it has certainly been a hot one. Now, when we look at the long range trends and the long term forecast, conditions are still expected to stay cooler than average through the middle to latter half of the month. Yes, there will be a few warmer days in the mid 80s, but across much of the Great Lakes region, that blue color shows you below average temperatures that are likely to be in the upper 70s to low 80s for the majority of the rest of the month. And this weather map goes from August 19th through August 23rd, where temperatures are expected to remain slightly cooler than average. Right now we're at a sort of crossroads in the jet stream where there is some cooler weather in the northern plains, but there's some significantly warmer weather in the southwest as well. And we are going to see a change in the jet stream into next week that will keep conditions slightly cooler than average. That cooler trend is likely to impact the lower Great Lakes region, the mid Atlantic and up through the East Coast where temperatures stay below average and really all that summertime warmth and heat is going to be confined to the desert Southwest and the southern United States, keeping us on the periphery of that what we call upper level ridge in the jet stream. And this dip in the jet stream or trough is going to keep cooler weather around through the latter half of the month. What does that mean for you? 
high temperatures that'll be right around 80 degrees. We're at the point in the summer where our normal highs around 84. So this weather pattern isn't necessarily going to bring any, let's say, fall feeling conditions. But even a day where it's 80 or 81 is still a hair below average for this time in August. As we round the corner into the final days of summer and even look ahead towards the start of autumn, we'll keep you updated. Subscribe to that Climate Friday newsletter at WTOL.com slash email and also grab that free WTOL 11 weather app for the latest. We'll see you next week.